for history long forgotten will be unearthed. Will their stories endure? Beric stepped out into the busy paved street, each side lined with tall wooden houses with overlapping second floors. To his left were the northern gates and barracks, not far at all from his apartment. To his right was the marketplace in front of the cathedral, and behind sat the grey, swirling, lifeless stone. He was known to visit it from time to time out of curiosity. Beric turned left and headed for the barracks at a fast pace. Zora had done a fine job on him, barely felt a tingle as he marched off. He was met by Vilik standing outside the barracks, practicing his bow and arrow on a training dummy, straw with a wooden bucket at its head. The boy was good. The dummy might not have been moving, but it was late evening. The sun was setting and darkness ruled the starless sky. He was surprised to see Vilik's skills as they were. He was certain he should have struggled to land the arrows as he did, one after the other next to his former shot. What was most impressive was how visible the dummy was as Barrett could hardly see the damn thing. He himself was a spearman, sporting a shield in his offhand. He would always keep his sword as reserve, however. Good thing, too, as he lost his spear during the battle with the undead earlier. Getting better each day, Beric said as he approached Felix. Let's hope well enough with what's out there. We'll be fine. Any word? Guard Captain Greenwald just got back. He's just briefing the seniors before he addresses the rest of us. Time for me to sharpen my blade and grab a drink then. Beric knew Grinwald liked the sound of his own voice, so he sat down by a lit brazier, grabbing a whetstone and water. Felix finished up with the dummy before joining him on a seat next to him. So what's happening out there? Felix asked, terrified. I'm not going to discuss that. I want to know what we face. This was a subject he'd like to discuss, and especially with a sibling. Beric stopped what he was doing and looked to his brother, who was prodding the coals of the brazier with a stick. He sighed and was about to speak when someone sat opposite them. They were dressed in white robes laced with gold and red colors. The robe was fairly tight on the wearer, with little loose material and pieces of metal armor covering the hips, chest, and shoulders. They recognized the smiling face of Zora looking back at them. She placed her mason shield down beside her and relaxed, though not entirely too comfy in her cleric's battle armor. Shit sky tonight. I was hoping for a bit of beauty on the night I died. Lovely thoughts there, Zora. Didn't realize the religious sea lots were such a depressive bunch. They both shared a laugh at their dark humor, but were interrupted by the barracks door slamming shut. Everyone gather around, barked Greenwald as he stormed out the door. Most were already gathered at this moment, was big enough to have people on edge. I'm assuming you all know what's happened, so I'll cut to the chase. Greenwald spoke loud clear and with huge authority. A voice of a king, some say, if king had commoner's accent. A large horde of undead have destroyed our main force. We don't yet know their numbers. Regardless, we have these walls, our archers, and gods with us. We have good reason to believe they will be heading this way next. Take up your posts and stay vigilant. Any questions? With that, everyone shook their heads and disappeared. Greenwald headed to the barracks, most likely heading to the tower that sprouted out of the middle of the barracks. It was the tower with the best vantage point for organizing a defense of the city. Beric followed Velix and Zora up the walls. Zora went toward the eastern side, doing laps of the walls, ready to give aid to those she passed. Velix went to his usual spot, just off the side of the northern gatehouse, while Beric took up position on top of the gatehouse. He wasn't armed with a ranged weapon, so he thought he'd help control the gatehouse. There was a tense sensation in the chilly air as midnight loomed. The moon had just managed to break through the clouds. Felix was almost falling asleep, his head constantly falling as his eyes gave up under the weight of his own eyelids. It had been a long day for him. He looked up towards the gatehouse, just about seeing Beric, who was looking out constantly, by the warming light of a brazier. He'd never realized how similar he really was to his older brother. Every feature was almost identical to Beric's, apart from his longer hair, impressive beard, and slightly older facial features. Beric saw he was being watched, he smiled and waved. Felix returned in kind and continued his watch of the empty horizon. Usually Beric's presence would settle him, but not on this night. Nothing could this night. In the distance, he noticed something. The air seemed to shimmer. 
He could hear rustling, louder than the forest leaves, and a light moan on the wind. He squinted, but it didn't help. He drew an arrow, lighting it on a nearby torch and strung it back as far as he could, letting loose into the dark distance. It landed with a thud and illuminated the area around it. Soon he lost sight of the arrow, among the endless stream of shambling corpses. It was clear to him there how many had come. It was no surprise that the army had lost. Fear gripped him, like an icy chill of trying to drain the life and warmth out of him. He could see how some were armed with weapons and colors of the city's own forces, some of the neighboring alleyed cities, and some had no limbs at all. That's then when he heard the thuds. Something big was just out of sight, and it was getting closer. The noise grew in volume and frequency. The hordes of undead seemed to increase slightly in pace, as if being pushed along by whatever was coming. Felix heard the crackling and creaking of the trees being felled. They were being pushed aside by the creature that emerged from the endless dark forest edge. It stood as tall as the two-story houses behind these walls and as wide as the gatehouse. It had the appearance of a giant, twisted spider, but only the legs and body. Where the head would usually have been was replaced by the torso of a man, with long arms and a bald head. So foul it left Felix speechless. He was about to call out an alarm when the beast lifted its head up and roared. The beast threw its head up and released its tongue into the air. It spit into three long strands of a tongue, each with its own movement. He was gripped, unable to speak, unable to move. He was frozen until the sound of the city's alarm bells were ringing. It brought him back. It was there that he readied himself for what was coming, though doubt was all he felt. Follow our links below for more content. And subscribe.